So I hope you are all still doing well. Today we have to look at the memo of T account exercise 3. I hope that you actually are keeping up with this work so that when you get back to school that we can just go through this work and it will all be just revision, not new work for you. So the first transaction says the owner made a financial contribution by depositing the personal check in the current account. You by now should know that any transaction must be recorded into two accounts. If the business receives money, bank being an asset will increase. That is why you have bank on the debit side. Asset increases on the debit side, decreases on the credit side. Inside bank, you should have the 1st of November, the money was received for capital. Remember, whatever the contra is inside the account is the name of the other account concerned and the amount 150,000. Capital is an owner's equity account, increases on the credit side, decreases on the debit side. So if the owner gives capital, her capital contribution will increase, which means her share in the business increases. Inside capital on the credit side, on the first you will write bank because bank is the name of the other account concerned. Can you see? And the amount is 150,000. The next one section, we issued a check in payment of the telephone account of 428. We are spending money. Where is the money coming from? From bank. Bank being an asset will decrease on the debit credit side. Sorry. You are paying the telephone account, which means that telephone will be your other account concerned. Telephone is an expense, as you know by now. I'm just going to write EXP for expense. Expenses increase on the debit side, decreases on the credit side. So in the telephone account on the third, money comes from the bank. Bank is the name of the other account. And the amount is 428. On the 7th, we cashed a check to pay the weekly wages. Again, same um, argument. Bank being an asset will decrease as we are spending money. You are spending money on wages. Wages is an expense. The more money you spend, the bigger the expense becomes. So on the debit side of wages, you're going to write on the 7th, money came from the bank. Remember, name of the other account concerned. And the money we spent was 560 rand on wages. In the 8th, we received consumable goods ordered and we paid per check. If we pay, money comes from the bank. Bank being an asset will decrease on the credit side. You are paying consumable stores, which means that your other account concerned will be consumable stores. Consumable stores is a nominal account because it is an expense. The more you spend on consumable stores, obviously the bigger the expense becomes. So on the debit side of consumable stores on the 8th of November, where is the money coming from? Bank. Bank is the name of the other account concerned. And the amount is 4674. Remember, I said when we started two accounts that every transaction must be recorded into two accounts. This is the double entry principle. What is the double entry principle says? That one account must be a debit and the other account is going to be a credit. And every transaction we've done so far, we've done this. Bank was credited, consumable stores debited. On the 10th, we issued a check to pay the following, stationery and a calculator for office use. Spending money, so money in the bank will decrease. Bank being an asset will decrease on the credit side. We are buying stationery, which means that we will have to open a stationery account, which is a nominal account. Stationery is an expense. Expense increases if you spend money on the expense. So on the debit side of stationery, you will have bank and the amount you remember. Inside the account, you will find the name of the other account concerned.
And then also on the 10th, a calculator cannot be used up. So a calculator cannot be stationary. A calculator will be equipment. Because remember, any possession of the business that cannot be used up is called an asset. And calculators and cash registers and printers and computers are all equipment. Spending money again, so bank will decrease. You write equipment inside the bank account because that is what you are spending the money on. And then you will have to write an equipment account. Equipment is an asset, increases on the debit side and decreases on the credit side. If you buy equipment, your equipment will obviously increase. Inside equipment, you write bank because that is where the money came from. That's the other account concerned. Double entry principle has been applied. Every debit has a credit. And let's go to the next one. Let's just wait. Right. On the 14th, we cashed the check to pay the weekly wages, 560 rand. Same procedure. Bank being an asset is going to spend money. We're spending money on wages. Wages is an expense. Can you see? Here's the credit. There's the debit. Double entry says every debit must have a credit. On the 15th, received a check in payment of catering done. We are receiving money this time. If you receive money, it's called current income. Money in the bank will increase. Bank being an asset will increase on the debit side. You will write current income, which means that your other account concern is current income. Current income is an income. Increases on the credit side. And inside current income, you will write bank, other account concerned. Then on the 18th, we paid the check for goods used, which is consumable stores, spending money, bank will be credited, buying consumable stores, the expense will increase. Double entry principle, every debit needs a credit. On the 20th, we bought equipment and paid per check. If we buy equipment, money in the bank will decrease. Equipment will increase, both being assets. Every debit needs a credit. Equipment was debited, bank will be credited. Cashed a check to pay the wages again. Same transaction as the previous one. Spending money, which means bank will decrease on the credit side. You are spending on wages, which means wages will increase on the debit side. Double entry principle, every debit needs a credit. Then on the 22nd, receive the account for the service of the owner's private vehicle, anything of the owner's drawings. So we are spending money on drawings. Drawings increases on the debit side, decreases on the credit side. Remember, double entry principle, every credit needs a debit. Then we also receive money for services rendered. If you receive money, money in the bank will increase. You are receiving current income, which means that your other account concerned will be current income. If you receive the income increases, Debit for bank, credit, current income. On the 28th, Ms. Pink is also the manager of the business. We pay her salary per check and we pay the weekly wages. Her salaries must go into an account called salaries. You are paying, so bank being an asset will decrease. Salaries being an expense will increase. Can you see that inside bank you had salaries, which means you had to open a salaries account. Paying the wages, we've done a few of them already. Spending money, so bank will decrease with what you are spending on wages, and wages is going to increase. And the last transaction on the 30th. We issue a check to Sunlam. What are we paying? We are paying insurance on the owner's house. And 
the f insurance on the business there's a question mark how do you calculate you know the check was 3600 of that 1200 is for the owner's private insurance so 2400 is the amount that you have to pay for insurance spending money so owner whatever the owner takes is called drawings you have a drawings account you have to write in drawings again then the other 2400 must go to insurance you are paying insurance new account expense insurance that is the exercise now to the next two slides i'm not going to give you the answers for the first one they're asking you must calculate what is the amount in the bank account i'm giving you a clue if you want to know what's left in the bank account you first have to calculate your total receipts then your total payments can you then get the money that's left in the bank what should you do that's your homework for next time second part of the calculation was you had to calculate the amount the business spend on wages and salaries before you can do that you first have to see how much was spent on wages in total how much was spent on salaries and then only you'll be able to calculate how much was spent on wages and salaries in total this is homework for those this, these calculations it's going to be homework for next week and tuesday stay inside stay warm remember it's going to be extremely cold don't, don't go and watch the snow stay safe at home I miss you and one of these days we will be in class again. Goodbye.